My name is Mark Kenyon, and I love white-tailed deer. I love studying them, too far, hunting them, and yes, eating them. Whitetails are found across a wider swath of America than any other large mammal, which is why I've set out for the ultimate whitetail tour, exploring the wildly different terrains these deer call home and the unique characters that hunt them there. On your love all the time. This week, I'm headed to Nebraska to get a taste of the nomadic hunting lifestyle practiced by Tony Treach, a self-proclaimed public land vagabond who spends several months each fall living out of his truck and chasing big game across the West. I'll get 24 hours to tag along with him and see how he uses a handheld decoy to lure in running bucks. And then I'll be off on my own to attempt this wild method myself. Kenyon. Tony. How are you? Good. Good to see you, man. Glad we're doing this. Before we gear up to hunt, Tony gives me a quick rundown of his process for the fall, how he sets up base camp in different locations, doing day hunts out of his tent and truck, and then moves on to the next location to start the process all over again. Tony fully takes advantage of the 640 million acres of wild public lands our country has to offer living a close to the land life in one of the few places this lifestyle is still possible. Well, if you're game for it, I was hoping to just tag along with you tonight or tomorrow morning, see how you do what you do, probably bug you with a lot of questions, mm -hmm. and uh, try to pick up the Tony Treach method. Yeah. So is this how most evenings would go? You're gonna find a glassing point and watch? Is this your usual uh, or is this just the beginning of the trip? I, you, you know, when I'm, when I'm in the plains hunting, it's usually all day long. I'm just, because this time of the year, you never know when a buck's going to stand up in the middle of the field right. with his doe, and then you just get that one glimpse. So I'm constantly looking. There's really no, I mean, I'll stop to eat, but just keep look, 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 look. And Should then, we get up there and start looking? With only a few hours of light left on my first day with Tony, my focus is simply to learn as much as possible. Tonight, we'll do some glassing to get a lay of the land and the animals we'll be stalking this week as well as seeing a demonstration of how Tony decoys deer. Uh, I'll just say he's, you know, he's bedded in this, uh, this brush we've got over here. I'm gonna figure out which way the wind's going. Most likely, his focus is gonna be on the doe, but the doe is still gonna be doing her natural thing. She's probably gonna be looking downwind. So I don't wanna come straight in from, with a perfect wind. I'm gonna try to get the wind quarter, and you're gonna have to find a spot where you can still shoot to him when he does stand up and see the decoy but you also don't want to be silhouetted. So, perfect situation. Maybe find a spot where you've got uh, a wall of grass and it goes from, you know, three, four foot and it breaks off down to this, this shallower stuff. I just try to get as close as I can without spooking them, but still giving me a lane. And that's probably usually the most important thing because that's gonna dictate where, where you're gonna stop. Yeah, so let's say, see, you've got this all set up 200 yards away, you made your stock in, now we're at the spot, like you don't want to get any closer. I have my bow in one hand, the decoy in the other, and I'm literally just crawling through the brush, just trying to get to that window, that spot that where I think I'm gonna have a, a window to shoot him if he does stand and, and does approach. So the most important thing is just being able to hunt a spot where you can find him bedded. Yeah. And if you can find him bedded, it's, you're gonna have a lot of fun. So what's the, uh, what's the trick? Have you found the trick to balancing this nomad lifestyle with you know, responsibilities as a husband. First off, make sure everything is dialed in at home before you go. Yeah. Um, even if you're going for two weeks or 10 days, if if things aren't right in the house or at work, you're not gonna enjoy your time. Do you get homesick? Oh you yeah. Been gone that long? Yeah. yeah, I miss her, I miss the dogs. You know, we don't have kids, so our, our pets are like little, little kids mm -hmm. to us. I, I'm totally fine being alone for long, long periods of time. Mm -hmm. Just know that it'll get better and you only got so many, so many days in the fall and so many Septembers and Octobers and Novembers in our life, you know. I'll tell you what, you get views like this, you want to soak them in for sure. It's beautiful. Got one out in the 
middle of the corn, dough. If you've hunted the Great Plains before, you'll know that it involves a lot of glassing. With endless landscapes, but not much cover, spotting game before they spot you is the only way you're gonna get a shot. Like I mentioned, for the months of September through December, this is Tony's life. If there's anyone that can show me what to look for, it's him. When you're usually slipping around doing this stuff, are you in, you're not in ultimate stealth, but most of the time you're covering ground until you spot one, right? So this is kind of normal. Mm -hmm. Farthest ridge up near the top. Um, yeah, this might not be a bad spot to set up and rail. Really? There's a big draw going off to the west. We already saw does there, we saw does here, those does here. Yep. Found a buck in a burning tree here. That might hang up in there. We could probably actually set up right here on the kind of the edge of this uh, brush. Yep. Okay, so we got this big bottom right here. We got, it goes up there, that red, you know, up, up in that uh, cedar draw is where I saw the buck the other day. We already know there's does over here. We got a nice little point right here where you know, the winds actually switch. It's perfect for us. I think we just, it's the perfect time of the day to try to call. You know, we're going in an area we, can, we don't know the area very well, so um, let's see how aggressive they are. Set up the decoys so that if he pops out of any of these little brush piles or come over these ridges, the first thing he's going to see is that. And why why buck and a doe right now versus just the buck? Just to cover both of us up better? Yeah, if I was doing this all by myself, I'd just have the buck. Clear a little bit of brush so you can move and draw. You'd be amazed at what you can get away with once they lock onto the decoy. I can't believe there's not some bucks around. Yeah. That's uh I hope they're still moving as late as they were the other day when I was in here. Yeah. I think you get the gist of what this gorilla style tactic's all about. Glass, move, set up decoys, rattle, repeat. We see deer all morning, mostly does and a few bucks, but never get close enough to connect. With the sun getting higher and Tony off to his next spot we head back to the truck to recap some strategy before I head out on my own. Well, I appreciate you sharing this with me. I mean, yeah. this has been something I've seen from afar. I've, I've heard you do it a few other people and I've seen pictures and a few videos and thought that looks incredible. I feel like I'm at least basically armed to, oh, yeah. to give it a shot now. You're gonna do just fine. So. You just gotta find, you gotta find a buck bedded in a spot where you can get close and let them see that decoy and yeah. get pissed off about it. Well, sometime in the next three <laughs> days, I'm gonna be texting you a picture, right? Let's do it. I right. hope I can do the same to you. Oh man, <laughs> I hope so. This has been fun. Yeah. I can't wait to see how it goes uh, for you now too. Yeah, thanks. We'll have to do it again. The public land we were hunting last night and this morning, you know, we saw some deer, but they're all off on private. It doesn't seem to be worth our time. So there's another piece of public land that I know has some potential that is about an hour and 45 minutes away. So I am now racing to get to that location before dark tonight so that I can scout the last, maybe even get a stock on something if we get there in time. So heading to the new country and uh, excited to see what that looks like. All right, so we're at that new piece of public and this is all big wide open grassy hills except for a river bottom that's, I don't know, maybe a half mile this way. 
I think, oh, I know, there's gonna be whitetails cruising that river bottom, hopefully coming up into these hills too. This is a spot where the public land actually drops down into that bottom. So I wanna get up on the hills overlooking it tonight, glass it and see if we can spot something. There's a good buck over there. Across the way on the private land, what a big shooter. Down there in the, to the right of those cedars where that big buck came out. Now there's a smaller buck and then that big buck's coming down the hill towards the smaller buck. Man, that was about as good as I could have asked for. Saw a decent number of deer, two really good bucks, and one of them that was on my side of the river that if he had showed up just a little bit sooner, 10 minutes earlier, I probably could have made a play on him, got the decoy up and got a shot. So it was an awesome encounter there, just a little bit too late. So I will be back first thing tomorrow morning and I am, I'm excited, I'm very excited. same glassing point I found last night looking down on this river bottom and my game plan for now is to stand sentry over it watch and wait and hopefully catch a buck coming to our bottom I positioned myself next to a steep draw with cedar so that if we see one drop into here I can peel off the side into this draw and get to the bottom without being seen and hopefully get in front of him if I see one small buck cruising off in the distance Hoping that's just the beginning of what will be a, a day-long parade of cruising bucks. Day one on my own gets off to a fast start. And while I never have that ideal buck better with the doe scenario, I do get multiple opportunities to observe and move in on bucks. Unfortunately, I'm never quite able to close the distance. running from bedding area to bedding area trying to find does. What's cool about this kind of area I'm in right now is it's a river corridor. It's narrow. All the covers in this little tiny strip. So all the doe bedding is in this little tiny narrow strip. Which means all the bucks are running up and down parallel to this river doing that same exact thing. If we can intercept one of these bucks finally and show them the decoy He's going to see someone who's also looking for females in his mind, and he's not going to like that competition.
we circled around and we were so exposed. We couldn't move the decoy out in front of us. I came so close to working. It was just a little out of range. emotional shock or something. The big one, the bedded one, the little eight that came running up, the first light, buck. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. Big 
box on my side upwind. They got the really good ones there too. There must be that hot dog in here somewhere. Let's slip up there. Close, but not close enough. And unfortunately, my deer filled day takes a turn when several other hunters and a group of ranch hands work their way through this piece of public. A chance encounter later does get me access to a neighboring piece of private, but again, nothing quite comes together. All right, well, uh, long story short on tonight's hunt, you know, saw a decent buck, snuck in, try to make a move heading in his direction, ended up spotting a really, really big buck. Uh, the biggest deer I've seen yet this trip. He was with a doe, tried to sneak in there and just never was able to get close enough to see him before dark. So that was the night. Um, all in all, hell of a day. I just don't know if we have enough time to get all the pieces to come together. It's not. It's not easy. It's been great. We've had a lot of opportunities. We've been able to be in the game, but having it all actually work out, that's another, that's another story. So uh, tomorrow's the last day. Gonna give it one more shot. I don't know what the deal is. If it's just the wind, if it was all the activity, the, the fact that we've been in here a bunch, the fact that I've been in here a bunch the last few days, but something's completely shut it down. I've seen just a handful of deer, one that one buck some does across the river. Um, probably the most likely thing is just how the rut is. Some days, all the rutting activity is in one spot. The next day, it's all in another. So, I've given it a good I don't know, five, five, six hours here. And uh, I think it's time to move on. It's the 
the last night, so I'm kind of just going for it. The wind's blowing hard in my left cheek. I'm just going to slowly walk my way through all the bedding cover on this property and kind of stop and glass, stop and glass, and just hope to spot a buck before they spot me. That big giant buck I saw last night is in the second piece of cover up here, maybe a thousand yards ahead of me. So, gonna send the Hail Mary and see if I can't get lucky. think about the other half of what Tony does. This nomadic lifestyle, hunting all across the country for months at a time. I used to have this idea that that's what I wanted to do too. And I did a little bit of it. There's a certain American romantic, I guess, ideal around that traveling vagabond that appeals to me and a lot of people. But it's different now that I have kids, and I can tell you, as much as I wanted to kill a buck here tonight, I want to see my kids more. So, while I'm bummed I didn't feel a tag, I'm really looking forward to getting home and seeing my family. <laughs> 